All right, all right, I'll come out and say it. I made a mistake. I made a mistake. In, in my last video talking about Nintendo, I ended the video by saying, look, as dramatic as this is, as insane as some of the stuff they're doing is, there's no way that this is gonna gain mainstream traction outside the hardcore gamer space, outside the gaming commentary space. And I was wrong. Nintendo have suddenly been very clear that when little Jimmy goes to buy his Switch 2, little Jimmy's parents better know that should little Jimmy use the Switch 2 in any way Nintendo doesn't want, little Jimmy's gonna end up in a prison cell alongside Side Gary Bowser by about 12 in the evening when I'm sat up drinking my cup of tea and suddenly stuff on my newsfeed because I have a gaming news channel so I'm always following a newsfeed and Nintendo 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 just keeps popping up all over my feeds because they're just doing legal things literally everywhere so in this video I'm going to break down basically the legal things that Nintendo have done over the past 48 hours and try and catch up on them and and but, but to, to preface the video, I just want to start by looking at one of the patents Nintendo has filed because I think looking at this particular patent of all the patents that they're now trying to pass through the American courts, not just the Japanese uh, patent courts, we'll, 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 get, we'll get to that as well as part of this video. I think looking at this patent gives us a flavor of the level of insanity that we're currently dealing with. Okay. So what should be on your screen now, if I don't really fail in editing this video due to my state of shock, is a patent that Nintendo are trying to bring that basically patents having mounts in a game. Now, if you look at the patent closely, you'll see there's a player character and then they press a button to summon an animal and then they go on board that animal and move around in a different way than they were when they were just a human standing on the ground. Now, they also do the same for this little fish mount. Now, this is, make no mistake, even patent lawyers are starting to come out and say that this is insane, including one who spoke to PC Gamer over the weekend. The context here is that they were discussing that Nintendo has recently tried to refile the patents that they've already had in Japanese court over in the United States. Now, each country has their own patent court, but there is an international treaty that basically means that all countries try and abide by the legal judgments of other countries. So, you know, everybody stays kind of copacetic, except whatever it is China are doing these days. But let's not talk about that can of worms right now. Now, the patent attorney speaking to PC Gamer mentions that we can look at these filings in U.S. patent court, and there have been an uh, edited number of times now, two times, because they were rejected by the courts for being far too broad. And if you look at what I just showed you, patenting mounts in games and the UI associated with that is a little bit on the broad side. So the whole thing I was saying about, ah, uh, you know, Japanese patent court is weird. It's been weird for years. I'm sure Nintendo aren't going to try this in America. Yeah, I was wrong. Nah, I was just completely wrong. They're insane. This is madness. Yeah, yeah. So so that's that story. So Nintendo are taking the, basically, they're going to try and block PAL World internationally and in the United States, not just in Japan. That's, that's, so that's. That's the one story, all right? So, the, yeah, it's not going to be just a Japan thing. Nintendo are trying to shut down any potential Pokemon clone globally. And they're trying to basically enforce a Japanese-style patent law on the United States. And by extension, once the United States agrees to it, the world is probably going to be forced to, right? So, that, that, so that's our first story, all right? Now, buckle, buckle yourselves in, because we're not done yet. So literally at the same time, all this is happening. The YouTube channel, Retro Game Corps, which is one of my favorite YouTube channels. His content is absolutely astounding. Watch it after you finish watching my video, obviously. He covers basically uh, consoles, uh, consoles you buy, third-party consoles. That's, that's his whole spiel, mostly. And he does really excellent reviews of them. And in one of his recent videos, he was showing one of those consoles playing a Wii U game a console that no longer exists with a store that is currently closed down. And he received a copyright strike on his channel, which if you know anything about YouTube, that that's pulling out the big guns. That's threatening a channel like his. That's it. That's threatening his livelihood there. And Nintendo just did that for showing Wii U, Wii U footage. He posted this to his community page. Hi, friends. Well, it does appear that my worst fears are true and that I am being specifically targeted by Nintendo. Remember, to copyright strike a channel, one of Nintendo's lawyers has to go on YouTube, report the video, and file a complaint. 
This is against him specifically. It's not like a general copyright claim. Like sometimes footage can be um, copyright claimed by the company and that's just the thing in the algorithm. This is specifically targeting him. He says, my Wii U video was taken down and I received another copyright strike, even though this showcase was no different than all the other tech demos and reviews I have made on this channel previously. I am considering a counterclaim under fair use as the video was for educational use and transformative in nature and had no effect on the market. It was a demonstration of a console no longer for sale, even the Wii U shop is closed, so the company itself has no means of earning revenue from Wii U sales. However, I am reluctant to open that can of worms with a multi-billion dollar corporation as their next step would be to file legal action. And of course, I think he's made the absolutely correct decision here. In fact, I was working on a video that I was going to do on how Nintendo ruined Gary Bowser's life before all this happened. But the news is just coming too quick for me to do any, you know, long term videos at this point. He goes on to explain that he is now going to blur out all Nintendo footage from all of the videos in the future on his channel, which if you think about the kind of videos he makes, that's that makes things incredibly difficult. Not to mention that this is insane. Nintendo don't like third party consoles. Nintendo don't like the biggest third party console review YouTuber. So they just try to shut his channel down. Uh, this is not this is not normal. This is not normal for Japan. It's not normal for the West. This is not normal behavior from any company full stop towards YouTube in 2024, pure insanity. But it does not stop there. Because like DJ Khalid is fond of saying, another one. Yesterday it was published to the Ryujinx Discord. For those of you that don't know, Ryujinx is an emulator that uh, allows you to play Switch games on something like a Steam Deck. Something that I would remind everyone, as long as you own the games, according to US law, is completely legal. By the way, piracy of games, not legal playing them on whatever you want to play your legally bought games on, totally legal, according to US law. Let's get let that out of the way and back onto the story. So it was posted to Ryujinx's Discord, one of their moderators, that uh, the guy, uh, GDK Chan, who was behind Ryujinx, was basically offered, given an offer by Nintendo. One doesn't know what that legal offer is, but I, I can imagine it was, hey, uh, shut down your operations entirely right now and you can have this money. Uh, and if not, if not, you see see the Gary Bowser guy whose life we ruined, that'll be you. It went something like that, you know. Um, and uh, so Ryujinx is gone overnight, uh, which was the only uh, Switch emulation option that we have left now that Yuzu is gone. And all of the forks of Yuzu, for those that aren't into coding, a fork is like a different development pathway of an application on GitHub. All of the forks of Yuzu that have been continued by other developers have been DMCA'd off GitHub, which is also incredibly rare for emulation development by Nintendo. So what does all this mean? Well, it's pretty clear that Nintendo are gearing up for some big announcements regarding the Switch 2. And Nintendo want to make very clear they don't care what the other big name companies in gaming do or feel. They don't care that Sony is completely fine with emulation. They don't care that Microsoft is completely fine and even supportive at times of emulation for the Xbox or what Tencent or NetEase or Epic Games do. They are clear. We have our standard for the way we want our IPs to be treated and we will attack absolutely anyone we feel like and destroy them. And they're doing all of these incredibly aggressive legal actions now in the run up to the announcement of the Switch 2 so that I, in my opinion, that all of the media coverage of the Switch 2 and how great it is always comes with the thing. Oh, yeah. And if you do anything wrong with the Switch 2, Nintendo will ruin your life. And I don't really see how you can both sell an ultra child friendly product and a threat to customers at the same time. To me, this to me, this really, I, I take back what I said in my previous video. If this is the long-term line that Nintendo are going to take, and this isn't just about Pocket Pair, as insane as that was, I think Nintendo might be actually just um, uh, crazy. Um, I can't see how you weave legal threats into your marketing strategy for a shiny, child-friendly product. It doesn't make any sense at all. Because I think once you start doing things like, presumably they're filing these patents to go after companies other than Paul World, right? That that I, I can't imagine, like they've already got him in trouble in Japan. Th these are, this is intended by 
as a larger move by Nintendo to try and seize a greater share of the gaming industry by copywriting loads of titles. Tim Tim has been mentioned in my comments. Tim Tim, Tim, Tim is a good game. Uh, there are a lot of other similar Pokemon style games out there. Uh, Yo-Kai Watch is another one. Uh, this seems part of basically a two-pronged effort by Nintendo. One is the patent stuff, which they're basically trying to use their legal might because they're just known for being this very litigious gaming company to try and seize a greater share of the gaming market by just suing everyone in, out of existence. And then on the other hand, there's this other prong to their attack, which is to scare uh, content creators, to scare emulation, and basically give all Nintendo consumers an implied legal threat with the purchase of each of their products. Hey, enjoy your Nintendo Switch too. And if you do anything wrong with it, we'll we'll drain your life savings and maybe lose you your job. I, I don't I don't think that's it. I don't think that that strategy can conceivably work because I, I changed my mind from three days ago with all these new filings. They're, they're clearly just trying to create an aura of fear around the Switch 2 so that when consumers buy it, they treat it with the appropriate level of care, which to me is to me is insane. And I, I you know, I, I'm uh, despite the accent, I'm British um, and maybe more culturally British. But one group that I can see uh, not going along with this are Americans. Uh, Americans don't like this kind of thing. And uh, I can I can see some more substantial blowback coming to Nintendo's way if they try and proceed a part, especially as part of the broader patent plan. Anyways, this has been a longer video than usual for me just because the amount of insanity. Uh, welcome to all the people that have joined over the past few weeks from these Nintendo videos and other videos. If you enjoyed this content, like and subscribe. I promise more normal same content in the future, but Jesus Christ, man. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. And until then, uh, peace out.